This is the D'Angelico Melody Face Signature Model, and it might be the coolest semi-hollow body guitar on the market today. It of course has the looks, but the quality is absolutely insane. It sounds amazing, it has a bunch of hidden features, and the specs are really, really unique and made for the modern guitar player. Just in case you don't know what this guitar is about, let's do a very, very quick history here. So. We of course have solid body guitars like a Stratocaster, Les Paul, and a Tele. Those are kind of the classic solid body designs. And then we have flat top and arch top acoustic guitars. And then this guitar is somewhere in the middle. So this top portion and this bottom portion are completely hollow, but then there is a solid center block in the middle and that's where you mount the pickups and the bridge and tailpiece onto. Now the benefit of this guitar is that we get a lot of the great things of a solid body and a lot of the great things of a hollow body. So you do have some acoustic volume, but of course they're not really made to be played acoustically. It's made to be amplified. So since we have that center block, we can definitely play this guitar loud and with overdrive. And when it does feedback, it's very musical instead of uncontrollable like it is on other arch top style guitars. And I also find that a semi-hollow guitar just has a different type of warmth and a different quality than a fully solid body guitar. So historically, a lot of jazz and blues players have liked these guitars. And more recently, a lot of the neo-soul, lo-fi, hip-hop, R&B style guitarists like these guitars as well because they sound amazing, especially this one. Now, one other thing I should mention before we get on to the main review is that this is a pretty big guitar. I'm six foot tall. 200 pounds, and as you can see, even on me, it looks pretty big. And that has been one complaint about this style of guitar from certain people over the years. But D'Angelico actually makes another version of this semi-hollow guitar with a smaller body. So if you don't like the bigger body, definitely check out the smaller version of that as well. It might be a better fit for you. So starting from the headstock, we have that old school D'Angelico Art Deco kind of a vibe here and we have the iridescent logos. And since this is one of their more expensive models, we have gold hardware. So we have gold tuners and these feel very nice. They're obviously very high quality, they turn well. And we have our gold trush rod cover with the Melanie Faye signature on the trush rod. And that's the only place on this guitar that says Melanie Faye. We also have a bone nut and it came cut perfectly from the factory. I can get the action crazy low on this guitar, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit more as we continue. So as we move to the neck, we have a lot to talk about. The first thing I want you to know is that it has a 1 and 11 16th nut width, which is slightly wider than what you might be used to, but I find it a really, really great nut width, especially if you're playing a lot of chords and finger style stuff. It makes things just a little bit more comfortable. And then we have these Jeskar nickel frets, which are of course top of the line, they're finished literally perfectly, so there's not a single sharp fret edge anywhere on the guitar. The leveling is perfect and it came that way out of the box. For those of you new to my channel, one of the first reviews that I actually did, totally unsponsored, was on D'Angelico Guitars. And that turned into a very long discussion about how they are a very underrated brand. I felt that way back then and I still feel that way today. So a big thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video, but I've been saying this forever. And even if this is not the exact D'Angelico that you want, Definitely check out my links below to see what Sweetwater has. They have pretty much the entire D'Angelico line. And I'll say it again, the Angelico guitars are great at every single price point. So definitely take a look there. And one other super important spec on this guitar is the radius. So on just about every traditional style guitar, be it a Strat, a Les Paul 335, you're going to get a radius somewhere between nine and 12, every once in a while, 14. And on center block style guitars, it's almost always 12. This guitar has a 16 inch radius, which is very flat, especially for a guitar of this type of style. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me go on this rant before, so I won't stay here too long, but I'll just say that classical guitar players who play a lot of finger style stuff, who play a lot of slow and fast stuff, they play completely flat fretboards. But when it comes to electric guitars, we have this weird idea that flatter fretboards are only for shredders, and I could not think that that is more incorrect. Flat fretboards feel great for playing normal cowboy chords over here, normal jazz chords up and down the entire neck, and of course for playing fast as well. So if you haven't given a more flat fretboard radius a try, 
definitely give one a shot. And a lot of the Angelical guitars have the 16 inch radius. So I'm really happy to see that across the brand. Then we have a rosewood fingerboard and really beautiful mother of pearl inlays. I mean, the inlays on this guitar and the inlay work is second to none. It's absolutely gorgeous. And one other thing that I really love about the Angelical guitars is their binding work. Of course, this isn't going to impact your playability of the instrument, but it's always nice just having a guitar that looks beautiful, that inspires you when you look down to play it. So the binding job on here is absolutely flawless and it looks gorgeous. And then for the next shape, it's pretty much a modern C. It's not super thin, it's not too thick, and it's, it's pretty much that medium ground, so it's very comfortable. And it's a satin back, so very, very smooth, nothing sticky. This neck is just an absolute joy to play. And as we continue to the body, we're going to see a lot of that same thing. So that binding that starts on the headstock moves its way to the neck and then through the rest of the body. And it's equally accurate everywhere you look. Now, of course, this guitar is surf green. On camera, it probably just looks like a flat color, but when you look up close, you'll see that it's actually a sparkle paint. So you see the sparkle in the body, you see it on the neck as well, and it looks even better in person than it does on camera. One other great feature about this guitar is that it comes with Kent Armstrong pickups. And for those of you who don't know, these are basically boutique pickups. So we have super high quality pickups. They sound amazing. And we have that all on a stock guitar. Then of course we have our master volume, master tone and our three-way switch. And having one volume and one tone knob per pickup is really great for getting a nice mixed tone. So you mix these two pickups together, you can get a really, really sweet type of a sound. But one other hidden feature about this guitar is that we have coil splits on each pickup. I want to try something a little bit different for today's tone demo, and you can let me know in the comments below if you like this format. I always record direct through my AxeFX 3, and how things sound to me in the room with my, my monitors compared to how it sounds when I'm editing the video is often very, very different. And I often have a lot of different ideas than what I felt in the room when I was recording. So with today's pickup demo, I'm going to also have on the side my running commentary and thoughts of each particular tone and how it differs recorded versus in the room. <music> So let me know if you like that new format of tone demo, and if you do, I'll keep it going like that in the future. Quick reminder that if you like Neil Soul, if you like Melanie Faye, if you like lo-fi style music, I have some lessons linked below. And my free newsletter is also linked below where I do other similar lessons. So there's a running joke on this channel that I only like ugly guitars, but we'll use this guitar as proof that I like pretty guitars as well. So the surf green is gorgeous. We have the gold hardware, even the little indicators on the knobs here that tell us where we are in the volume or tone. They look very similar to the skyscraper style truss rod cover. Of course, the binding is on the whole thing, the mother of pearl, 
the gold hardware. It's it's just a beautiful looking guitar. And I know there's going to be some people who say things like, you know, oh, that guitar is made in Korea. It shouldn't cost that much money. But here's the thing. I've already made it very clear that I don't care where a guitar is made. I bought three and four thousand dollar Strandbergs that are also made in Korea. It does not matter to me. As long as the guitar has great features and very high quality, and in this case, also amazing looks. A few other small things that I like about this guitar. Number one, it came with strap locks, which is awesome. And number two, it also came with a nice hard shell case. So you look at the guitar, it looks gorgeous. The binding is perfect everywhere on the instrument. So it has the looks. We have Jeskar frets, a bone nut. We have Kent Armstrong pickups with coil splits. So again, super high quality parts. Everything sounds good, everything feels good. And then we have the 1 and 11 16th nut width with the 16 inch radius. That's a combo I have not seen on any other center block style guitar. And I think that's a game changer for anyone who likes to play these guitars. It really makes them far more versatile in my opinion, along of course with the different pickup configurations. So I think this is an amazing guitar for any price. Of course, if you want a similar guitar for less money, you can check the other D'Angelico guitars because they're all very high quality, but I think this one is fantastic. I have no problem recommending this to anybody who likes this style of guitar. And if you like talking about gear or if you want to talk to me directly, you can check out my Patreon link below.